I plug my earbuds into my phone and I'm using it as a mic, so hopefully the audio will be slightly better than it normally is. Hello, hi, what's up? It's April, good old April. Flowers are blooming, the sun is shining. April things. Something else that happens in April is my birthday. Yes, it is my birth month. My birthday is near the end of this month. And to be honest, it's looking like it's gonna be sort of a lonely affair. Schools are closed, restaurants are closed, you can't really go and see anyone, so it's basically just gonna be me at home in my pajamas doing nothing. Which is fine, you know, with the current state of the world, it's not the worst thing that could be happening. But because of that, I thought I would give myself a little treat by rereading my favorite books as a little birthday present to myself. I actually got this idea from Chandler Ainsley. I really love her channel. I've been watching her so much recently, so I'll leave her link in the description if you want to go check her out. I just decided I'm going to pick some of my favorite books and I'm going to just read them throughout the month of April as a little birthday gift to myself. I picked out four books to read. I do have more favorite books, but I didn't pick those ones because I either don't own them or I have already read them rather recently, so I don't want to reread them just yet again. So here are the four books that I chose to read during the month of April. First up, I have here the Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. This is a book set during World War II in Germany and it follows a young boy named Bruno. His family moves out of Berlin to basically the middle of nowhere and one day when he's playing around the back of the house he runs into a fence. I think the first time I read this book was in like fifth grade and it was really maybe my first look at historical fiction. I read this book multiple multiple times just so many times over the years and I love it so much. It really takes this dark topic and it tells it in a way that's easily accessible to children so that they can you know delve more into this time in history and learn more about it. I love this story so much and I love the movie. Oh my god. Every book I chose has a movie adaptation. I think this has just turned into reading my favorite books and then watching the movie adaptations. I'm excited to pick this back up again because I haven't read it in a hot minute. Next up I have The Martian by Andy Weir. This book follows an astronaut named Mark Watney who is part of one of the first missions to Mars. During this mission something goes horribly wrong and his crew is forced to evacuate. They end up evacuating and leaving him on the planet because they think that he's dead. So now he's just not dead and he's on Mars and he has to figure out a way to survive and to get home. This book is so witty, it's so funny. There's a ton of like science in here that completely go over my head because I am not a science person whatsoever, but it's just told in such a way that it doesn't even matter. You don't have to know anything about science to still read this and love it. And that's me. I've read this like twice now, so this is gonna be my third reread. Um, I'm really excited. But next up, I have Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman. I think that's how you say his name. I really hope that's how you say his name. This book is set in Italy in the 80s, and it follows a boy named Elio Perlman who lives lives there with his parents in this beautiful grand villa. His dad is a professor and every summer he invites one graduate student from overseas to come and stay with them so that they can work on their thesis. And one summer it just so happens that he invites Army Hammer who plays Oliver. It's just this gorgeous story about first love and exploration and finding yourself and first heartbreak. It's such a beautiful story and the movie is so beautiful as well. I actually saw this movie before I read this book and I absolutely fell in love with the movie. Movie. It was just so well done and so I picked up the book and the book was equally as good So I'm excited to reread this and the last book that I'm gonna be reading for this is my favorite book of all time Which is The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. This book is also a historical fiction also set in Germany also set during World War II, also following a child. In this case, the child is a girl named Liesel, and she is being taken to live with some adoptive parents because it's not safe where she is anymore. So she learns to steal some books, and she's just basically growing up, but things get a little bit difficult for her when her adoptive father agrees to hide a young Jewish man in their basement. This book, I just, I don't know what to say about this book. The story that it tells and the themes that it explores and the way that it's told is just so, so gorgeous. We get to grow up with this girl, Liesl, and see this terrible time in history through her eyes. And it's just so good. I'll probably talk more about it when I actually get to reading it. So I'm just gonna spend this month going through my favorite books and rereading them and then watching the films. Out of these four, my favorite film is Call Me By Your Name. But Call Me By Your Name is like my favorite film of all time, but my favorite book would be this one. So I'm probably gonna reread this one last, 
but I'm gonna watch Call Me By Your Name last. Last night I finished Crazy Rich Asians, and so I'm gonna watch that movie like right now before I forget anything from the book. It's the next day. I didn't do much of anything yesterday, but the one thing I did do was read. I got 104 pages into The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about it. I haven't reread this book in a long time, like probably since I was a lot younger, and so now that I'm reading it again and I'm older and I've matured as a reader, I'm starting to pay attention to different things. When I read it when I was younger, I was mostly reading it just for the story, just, you know, straightforward reading it, but now that I'm older, I'm still reading it for the story, but I'm also picking up on things like characterization and the theme development in this book. One of the things I want to talk about really quickly was that I love that this is told from a child's perspective because you can really feel that Bruno is a nine-year-old boy. Having Bruno narrate it, it brings this innocence and sort of a naivety to this story that really juxtaposes the terribleness of the time that he's living in and the things that are happening around him. It just shows how little people knew about what was actually going on and to see it through someone as young and naive as Bruno. It's a really refreshing take on that time period and I just think Bruno does a good job of narrating. I love Bruno's voice as well. Like the way John Boyne writes, you can tell that you're reading from the perspective of a child. There's a lot of rambling going on in his writing, I think, but I don't think it takes away from the story. In fact, I think it enhances it because like when I read it, I can tell like, oh yeah, this seems like a child. This seems like a juvenile mindset. And I just love that it helps you put yourself into the mind of a nine-year-old. One more thing I wanted to point out is that Bruno, because he's so young and doesn't really understand anything, he mispronounces the word Führer. Führer? I, I don't think I'm saying that right. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm putting a French accent on that when really it should be a German accent, but I don't know how to do a German accent. F-U-H-R-E-R basically the name that people called Hitler. He mispronounces that word as fury. And I just thought that was so interesting and smart. It was something I hadn't noticed before that the mispronunciation of Führer is really what Hitler is all about and what this time was all about. This fury and this anger and hatred that people had towards, I guess, the world and everyone in general. It was such a dark time. And I just love how when I was younger, I didn't even pick up on that, that Bruno's mispronunciation of Führer was more telling of who the Führer himself was. See, that's why I love rereading stuff, especially when I haven't read it in a long time. I can go back and I can see these things that I didn't notice before, and it just enhances the experience for me. There's a couple things I want to do today. One is write. I want to do some writing. Two is I should probably do my math ISU that I got three weeks ago before school closed, and I still haven't done because online classes are starting up on Monday, and um, I should do that. I haven't done math in three weeks, so we're gonna see how terribly this goes. But after that, I will finish off The Boy in the Striped Pajamas because I only have like a hundred and something pages left. And it's really easy to get through this book because the words are just ginormous. Okay, I'll talk to you again soon. Finish The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. <laughs> when I set out to do this, I thought it was gonna make me feel better because they're all my favorite books, but it's only making me feel worse. <laughs> I realized that many of my favorite books are highly depressing and now I'm just reading a bunch of depressing books. But you know what, I'm not even going to complain because they're just so good. Boy in the Striped Pajamas has been one of my favorites since the first time I read it when I was like, I don't know, 11? And it was just one of the most powerful stories that I'd read up until then and it's still stuck with me all these years. I'm going to move on to something that's a little less depressing, still has its fair share of depressing moments but it's not wholly sad, uh, which is The Martian. But before I do that, I should probably work on some math, even though I really, really don't want to. A birdhouse, a milk curtain birdhouse. Yeah. The race is time.
All right, it's several days later and a couple things have happened. Number one is that school is starting to pick up a lot more. I've gotten some work to do. I've had some live sessions. It's going great. Number two is that Netflix recently added Community to their library, which means I am now binging it. Community is one of my favorite shows ever. It was one of the first like real shows that I watched when I was younger. A show that wasn't like on Disney Channel or Family Channel or things like that. It was like a real out there in the world show and so it has a really special place in my heart. I love it so much. First three seasons are absolutely amazing. Season four and five are less amazing <laughs> but season six uh, kind of redeems itself a bit. Nothing will compare to the first three seasons of Community. They were gold but in terms of The Martian I have made it 145 pages in and it's getting spicy. It's really picking up. Wow the sun is like there, now you can see it. I love our protagonist. Mark Watney is just so intelligent. He's witty, he's sarcastic, but he's also really great at problem solving. And I think that's one of the reasons that makes this book so fun to read is that we're following a really awesome protagonist. I feel like if we weren't following someone like Mark Watney, it would be a lot more dull, but Mark just brings so much more to the table because the narration is so witty and humorous, but then also you can see him work things out in his brain and it's really interesting. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of science in in this every time that mark has to figure something out you know he walks us through the science and i really like that the author in this book somehow made the science really accessible even though there's a ton of really like high level information things that i definitely don't know it doesn't put me off of reading it because i can still grasp what's going on even though i don't understand the exact nitty-gritty of exactly what mark is doing i have the big picture of what's going on and how that's going to help him and help advance the plot so i feel like a lot of people People may think that because there's so much science in it that it's gonna be dull or boring or that they won't be able to understand it but I think it's the complete opposite I feel like because there's so much science it also helps the story root itself in reality it feels like this is something that could have happened to a person like sometimes I forget that this isn't a true story that it's literally fiction because there's so much science and because you're getting so much explanation behind the things that Mark is doing the things that NASA is doing it just makes it feel like it's something that could actually happen I don't think there is a moment in this book where I'm kind of like that seems a little far-fetched instead everything seems so real because of all of the scientific processes because of all the coding and like botany that goes into it even though I might not understand to the fullest extent I can still read it and understand what's happening and have a good time but if you are an intellectual and you do understand these things I think it'll be even more fun for you because you can like figure out what to do with Mark as we go along I think I will see you again once I get a little bit further into the book for now I have to do some homework and then I'll read. Wow, I forgot what a roller coaster of a book this is. Nothing ever happens easily for Mark Watney. As soon as you think things are falling into place and then something might go right and that things are happening, boom, something else happens and it messes up everything and now we're back to square run. I remember reading it for the first time and being like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Like something else went wrong because <sighs> there's just so many things that go wrong and it hurts every time something does. All right, I'm officially done reading The Martian. This is just such a fun book in every way. I, mean, I read over half of this in one sitting. I just sat down and I read for like hours and hours and I finally finished it at like 1 a.m. I'm gonna talk a little bit spoiler about this, so if you don't want spoilers for The Martian, just mute until the poster goes away. I'll put a poster up. In the end, he does get rescued because his crewmates come back for him, doing a really risky maneuver to do so. And it's just, uh, when he first sees Beck, who's the one who actually comes gets him from the MEV, when he first sees him and he says, I just need a moment because you're the first person I've seen in 18 months. I just, it hurts so much. I actually love how the movie did it as well. When he's getting ready for the launch in the movie, he starts crying and I'm just like, uh, look at me. Imagine that situation where you think this is it like it's gonna end one way or another today Either I'm gonna get saved or I'm gonna die trying today and oh It's so emotional because it's like, you know, it's the last day of Mars. He's finally leaving I really like one particular passage. It's at the end of the book that I'm gonna read for you The cost for my survival must have been hundreds of millions of dollars all to save one dorky botanist Why bother? Well, okay. I know the answer to that part of it might be what I represent 
progress, science, and the interplanetary future we've dreamed of for centuries. But really, they did it because every human being has a basic instinct to help each other out. It might not seem that way sometimes, but it's true. If a hiker gets lost in the mountains, people will coordinate a search. If a train crashes, people will line up to give blood. If an earthquake levels a city, people all over the world will send emergency supplies. This is so fundamentally human that it's found in every culture without exception. Yes, there are assholes who just don't care, but they're massively outnumbered by the people who do. And because of that, I had billions of people on my side. I just love that passage so much because it leaves us with a little bit of hope that I think we all need sometimes. Especially now, I think reading that really made my spirits lift a little bit. Awesome book. I had so much fun. This is just, oh, it's so good. It's maybe one of my favorite sci-fis and I think it takes that title because of how rooted in reality it is. Like I said before, I'm not a big sci-fi person. Um, I don't read a lot of sci-fi. I don't like sci-fi a lot, but when I read this, something about it just hit me in a way that none of the other sci-fis I've ever read before had. I love it so much. I don't know what else to say. I've decided I'm going to split this video into two parts because my phone cannot handle exporting anything longer than this video right here. So stay tuned for part two of this video in which I read Call Me By Your Name and The Book Thief so I can finish out this whole rereading my favorites for the month of April. To the one person watching this, thanks. Let me know if you liked this video and I will see you in my next one which will be part two of this video. Bye-bye.